Well, Shabbat Shalom to all who believe, those that are seeking. I say Shalom to you and those who just don't care. You're probably not watching this anyway. Uh, today, uh, this fine Sabbath, the day before, this is the seventh Sabbath and the seven Sabbath count. Uh, tomorrow will be the Feast of Pentecost. And what I wanted to point out here is there's a lot of those that are into the rapture, things of this sort, and, you know, they, they're they a little off on the way that they should read the prophecies and such, the uh, occurrences uh, that our King Yahshua was speaking about. And here in Matthew 24, you know, he's speaking about, as you can see down here in Matthew 24, 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, and and a lot of people think that, uh, you know, from what I see on uh, YouTube, that's mainly where I do a lot of searching and seeking, seeing what uh, the preachers out there are speaking of, those that claim they're prophets and such, or that they know the prophecies, and I don't know of anybody yet that actually knows what the prophecies are. I don't know of anyone that has this gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of prophecy, yet. Uh, we're all basically guessing, looking at uh, different things, and they can't even see here where it talks about, this is assuredly, and this is uh, Matthew 24, 34, it says, assuredly, okay, absolutely, I say to you, this generation will no uh, know wise, uh, by no means pass away till all these things take place. And he's speaking about our king's return up here. And then there's a complete subject change here, okay? Because there were three questions that the disciples had asked, and he answers all three of them here. And he's talking about the time of the end, where, the, where it says here in verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away. Okay, well, when our king comes, the heaven and earth isn't passing away at that time. In fact, he's coming to rebuild uh, the earth for the second resurrection. And uh, when Satan will be released for a hundred years uh, to test and try all those that are not part of this priestly family. Uh, the 144,000 in these last days are but a remnant of a specific number that it doesn't really show from what I've seen in Scripture, and it may be there, I don't know. But the 144,000 is a remnant of a number, okay, that Father Abraham's part of, and Moshe, and even our king, he is the high priest right now in these last days. They're all part of the foundational number and the 144,000 are but a remnant of that priestly family. And we're going to be teaching all those that will listen here shortly. But anyway, when our king returns, the heaven and earth is not going to pass away. Okay, that's going to be rebuilt, but he's specifically speaking of the end of days. Okay, the end of days for what? The heaven and the earth when it passes away. Okay, he says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Talking about the Feast of uh, Pentecost that's coming up, about the uh, seventh day Sabbath, about every one of the Ten Commandments, every one of the laws, none of these things are going to pass away. Our King became the every living word. Okay, but here he's talking specifically about the heaven and the earth will pass away. Well, when's this going to take place? He says in verse 36, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the Malachim of heaven, but my Father only. So the Son of Man doesn't even know exactly when the heavens and the earth will pass away and be remade, okay, made anew for us to live on forever, but nobody knows that time. And, and these preachers out here trying to speak about the prophecy try saying that it means that no one knows, not even the Son, when he's going to return. And I guess you can, you know, these people can think that if they don't read what's all the way up here in the Scriptures, okay? I mean, the disciples ask them, you know, questions. 
concerning what our king speaks of here. He talks of tribulation. He talks of all these things that's going to take place and what to look for when our king returns. These things are going to take place before this time when our king returns. Okay, Our king changed the subject and said heaven and earth will pass away. Okay, but when? No one knows except for the Father. Then he goes back again talking about when he's going to return. Here in verse 37 he says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, and now people are out there saying, you know, that all these floods and the storms and everything are like it was in the days of Noah. But this is simply not true. Okay, that did take place, but it was after Noah was shut up into the ark. Yahweh closed the door himself, okay, and, and then the floods came. But why did the floods come, okay? Here in Genesis chapter 6, which is a controversial chapter, Smithsonian Institute has been hiding the bones of giants and such for many years, trying to uh, bring in this evolutionary Darwin theory, uh, to overshadow our Heavenly Father's love and compassion in making and creating us to begin with. All right, but it talks about here in verse 4 of Genesis 6, he says, There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, okay, they're still here. <laughs> They've had recent reports about, uh, you know, a giant being shot to pieces, you know, uh, in a different country overseas, but. There's giants all over. They're discovering. They've got bones and such, and the bones come up missing all the time to keep this history unknown. It says, When the sons of Yahweh came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men of old, who were of old, men of renown. Okay, now, the reason for the flood, okay, right up until the ark's door was closed and it took about 120 years for Noah and his children to build it and who knows maybe some others helped them build it as well but they didn't get onto the ark it says then Yahweh saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually they woke up in the morning wondering you know what kind of evil things they were going to do. Now our king explains a little bit of that in Matthew 24, which we'll go back to here in a moment. But their thoughts here, the intent, the thoughts of their heart were evil all the time. They were, and it speaks of, you know, how here in, uh, in uh, chapter 6 of Genesis, it talks about, in other places, you know, where these... Uh, fallen holy Malachim that went into the daughters of men, they weren't satisfied with just them. They started having sex with fish and chickens and goats and pigs and everything else with one another. They were having sex. That's all they thought about was doing evil things. Okay, so it says here in verse 6, And Yahweh was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So, as you can see, Yahweh didn't know everything. He, you know, there are things that came about, but his plan is still going to come about. These things have all been uh, evaluated, measured, and heaped in there. And uh, what's going on right now with the sins on the earth, as you can see, men marrying men, men marrying donkeys, and women marrying horses, and you know, having sex with animals and each other and all sorts of stuff, the adultery, the fornications, it's back to the same point again. Uh, you could turn on any news station and see naked people, you know, acting inappropriately, trying to promote uh, the idea that children shouldn't even know what gender they are. Uh, if you know the gender you are, then you're wrong. And you need to be recycled into something that is, you know, abhorring. And it's a terrible world that we live in right now. And you speak against it, and, you know, they consider it hate speech, you know. But I just hate what people do. I love the people, you know. And I'm not a hater of people. I'm a hater of sin, okay. And, and sin and I just don't get along too well. 
But anyway, Yahweh said, I'll destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I made them. And Noah, he found this pardon and acquittal in the eyes of Father Yahweh, and him and his family was saved. Everybody else, okay, right up until that day, there was no rainstorms, there was no flooding, there, there was nothing before the door was closed on the ark that these people could even relate to. There never been a thunderstorm, okay? And I know it's hard for some people to understand that, but there were actually fountains of water that came up out of the earth. The system was broken up with the flood that did come, but until those days, all they did was whatever was in their own hearts, in their own minds. Noah was different. He didn't partake in these uh, festivals of sin, but, you know, all these others, and the every intent, the thoughts of their heart were evil continually. And this is what our king is talking about here in Matthew 37, uh, uh, Matthew 24, 37. It says, but as in the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. He's not talking about the storms and everything. He mentions there's going to be storms and such. But this isn't what he was speaking about. He was talking about the evil thoughts, you know. I mean, take a look at it. There's abortions everywhere, and I'm thankful there are some uh, states that are actually uh, fighting against this. Our king, he opens the womb. And if you're not out there fornicating or committing adultery, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. If you are, our king still will open the womb, and that's where these children come from, you know, and even though they may be considered bastards, illegitimate, uh, they are still a gift from our king, and for people just to take the gift of our king and throw it away or, or provide it for food, uh, for our food chain, you know, where they they put these fetuses in uh, cosmetics and everything else, you know, they've got purpose for it, and their purpose is wrong because they're thinking evil continually, okay? It's just like in the days of Noah. And here it says, uh, in verse 38, it says, For as in the days before the flood, okay, this was before the flood. They didn't have warnings like what's going on right now. Uh, there are many places across this world that are flooded out. Uh, they're being blown away, you know, with tornadoes and hurricanes and such. And some people are waking up and realizing that, you know, everything they have is nothing. I mean, there's forest fires raging everywhere and, and people being burned up. And it talks about, you know, that we're going to be tested with fire. But that's still not exactly what is taking place. And I want to keep focused here on the days before the flood. Before the days before the flood, like I said in Genesis 6, you know, they were thinking evil continually. And for somebody to think, you know, if, if they have any truth in them at all, and they've ever read the scriptures, to come up with an idea that it's all right for a man to marry a man, or a woman to marry a woman, or even have sex with each other, Scripture is very plain about these things. It's not to be done, but I don't hate the people doing it. I just hate what they do. It's a horrible thing what's going on because they're actually committing spiritual suicide. Their mind gets turned over to this uh, reprobate mind. They can't think straight. They're clouded. And they just keep going further and further, like in Genesis 6, you know, where their thoughts are evil continually. An evil thought is anything that goes against the holy written words. Okay, and it says, They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. Alright, they were doing these things. They were marrying each other. <laughs> I mean, these things are not new. Everything, you know, you think is new was already done. There's nothing new under the sun, as Solomon had said. And I believe him. Now, here in Matthew 24, 39, it says, And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Now, I want you to pay attention to the language here. It says, And it took them all away. These ones that were taken away were taken by the flood. 
okay which is going to help you understand the next couple verses here and then we're going to you know end this little study to to help you understand you know that the weather that's going on sure that's a sign of our kings going to return but it has nothing to do with these days of noah there was no flood there was you know after the ark was done and it shows and did not know until the flood came and the flood came and took them all away all of them except for noah and his family and the animals on the ark everything else was taken away and it says so also will be the coming of the son of man be and that's because so many people are blind to what the truth is and they're just running off doing their own thing and and this says those that are doing evil will do evil still or wickedness still and those that are doing righteously will do righteousness still and righteousness of course is the keeping of the ten commandments and the laws as it says in deuteronomy 6 verse 25. now with this in mind you know the flood came and took them all away so here you know was a misconception by most every preacher I know of out there that speaks of these things trying to intertwine the rapture into these things it says then two men will be in the field okay two men will be in the field one will be taken the other is going to be left here behind okay so it's a totally flip-flop of what most preachers want you to know because it talks about the wicked and the evil men here it says and they did not know until the flood came and took them all away they were taken away and here it shows two men's going to be in the field one's going to be taken away okay the evil one's going to be taken away and the one that seeks our king and to please him and our heavenly father they're the ones that's going to be left the wicked will be taken because at that time when the harvesters come they're going to you know at that time remove the tares okay and they're going to be burned they're going to be taken away and it says two women will be grinding at the mill one will be taken and the other one's going to be left behind the wicked one that's imagination of their heart does anything except for what our heavenly father has commanded us to do through his righteous son and his righteous son said the same things the righteous son yahshua our king he kept the every word he lived by the every living word of our heavenly father and then our king says down here as well he says watch therefore for you do not know what hour your Messiah is going to come all right so you don't exactly know so that's because we don't have the Holy Spirit's gift the spirit of prophecy out on anyone yet and I pray most every day that somebody will get this so we will be able to understand the truth behind all these prophetic words but as it stands right now there isn't any in fact most of the prophets out there those who claim they are prophets they eat pork or they're keeping Sunday as a Sabbath they some might not keep the feast uh, that was not so with the prophets of old the prophets of old lived by the every living word uh, so don't be deceived out there people you know and uh, as far as those that are going to be taken they're going to be taken to be burned they're going to be taken to be destroyed the two men in the field one will be taken for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage just like today until the day Noah entered the ark we're not talking the floods and the storms and such those are signs that our king's going to come but it has nothing to do with the days of Noah and they did not know until the flood came and took them all away and that's how it's going to be when our king comes because if they're not going to listen they're the tares and they're going to be taken away uh, pray for those that are of the faith pray for those that are the body of our king uh, let's cry out for judgment hopefully this uh, Pentecost tomorrow here Holy Spirit may be poured out you never know you know it says during a feast that the servants the 144,000 will be sealed and at the time that they're sealed it speaks also and whether it's on that day or shortly after or shortly before I do not know 
but it states that Holy Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. Let's pray that this take place on this Pentecost as it did on the Pentecost after our king laid his life down and took it up for us. Uh, the disciples were sitting in the room. After thousands and thousands that heard what our king had said, they went and ate bread and fish that, you know, were uh, a blessing from just a couple fish and a couple loaves of bread to being enough to feed 4,000 men at one time, 5,000 at another, not counting the women or children. There were, who knows, maybe 15, 20, 30, 40,000 in those groups that got fed from a couple fish and, you know, a couple loaves of bread. And yet, on the day of Pentecost, there was only about 120 who believed enough to be where our king told them to be, in that upper room. But there were also those that were even uncircumcised and such. They were out in the parking lot outside waiting for Kepha and the other apostles to come out to bless them. And the Holy Spirit fell on them as well. Okay, so let's hope that these things will take place. Uh, those that you planted seed into... <coughs> May they start to grow. May somebody come and water them. Let's hope that uh, we can bring this family out to being the biggest family ever. To please our Heavenly Father. To please His righteous Son. Uh, to please one another. I mean, there's nothing like true fellowship. But you, you don't want to be the one here in the field that's taken. You want to be the one that's left behind. We are sheeple. We're not goats, okay? And... And they try to put a bad uh, name on the sheeple. But, you know, our king, when he comes, it's going to be an easy judgment. The goat's on his left hand and the sheep on his right. You're going to see it. It's going to be a mark in their hand and their forehead the same way as those that are of our Heavenly Father through his righteous Son. They'll have these signs. You get a sign in your hand when you keep the Sabbath day holy. And it's a, it's a mark, it's a sign, it's a signet that you're a son of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His righteous Son. So with these things, I hope you contemplate what I was uh, hoping to bring out. I hope it was clear enough that you might be able to see that a lot of these rapture things, you know, they've just got twisted and tangled together, and they don't really know what they're talking about. The scriptures are rather plain when you actually look at it this way. The fountains of water watered all the trees and the grasses and everything. They came up, they spurred it out like, you know, a little different maybe than Old Faithful. They had to be some kind of spraying. It was a fountain that would water the land. They didn't have storms. They didn't know what rain was until after the door was closed on the ark with no inside. Uh, let's get into the ark, and that's our king's heart. Let's ask his forgiveness and... Uh, Let's pray for one another. I love you all, and I say Shabbat Shalom to you, and tomorrow is going to be a great Pentecost. I hope that you'll uh, keep it just like you do a Sabbath, and praise our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son for giving us these days that He promises He'll be here with us. So let's just pray the Holy Spirit be poured out, and if it don't, we've got more feasts to come. Until then, I love you all, and Shabbat Shalom.